also known as Salt, she is a Brooklyn native who helped form the all-female rap group Salt and Peppa in 1985. Over the next 10 years, they became the first female rap act to have gold, platinum, or multi-platinum albums, and they still remain the best-selling female rap group in history. Next, Pastor A.R. Bernard talks to Cheryl James Ray. Cheryl, Salt and Peppa, uh, now you're salt and light, All right? <laughs> but you come out of, and I'm careful to say come out of, because you still have a passion to reach that very community called hip-hop that you were involved with. How did you make that transformation? Because I think you, you were in church pretty early, but something happened at some point in time. Well, um, I, I submitted my life to, to Christ um, for a number of reasons. The main one being I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And um, God just brought me to my knees and he just showed me where I was just compromising and, you know, just walking and straddling that fence. And um, so he said to me, I need all of you. And that was just all I needed to, to hear because I didn't re I really didn't know what I was doing wrong, why I was still feeling so conflicted. And so I submitted my life to him. But since I've done that, my life has changed in a, in a lot of ways. I pulled back from the group, I pulled back from the industry, and I, I allowed the word to marinate in me because God will take you out, he'll clean you up, and he'll put you right back in, you know? That's good. And that's what he did for me. But I have to say also, I'm gonna toot the CCC horn, toot toot. Coming here is, is, has been such a blessing to me because I've been to a whole lot of other churches and a lot of other ministries and the way that you teach the word, you know, it helps to renew your mind and it helps you to be able to communicate Christ and culture. And it's such a balance. You know, and when I came here, I didn't feel condemned. I didn't feel judged. I felt loved. That's very important because there's other churches that I've gone to and, you know, I got the looks and the stares and people coming up to me like, how could you be here when you're doing this, that, and the other? And I didn't get that here, so I felt very comfortable coming here. And you all allowed me to go through my process. I was still doing videos and I was still in the industry, but you understood and you and Karen and, and the CCC family understood that I was going through my process and you let me do that and I appreciate that. Amen. I think all, all of us here at CCC, we've heard it again and again, that change is not an event. Change is a process. And I don't care whether it's our congregation here or one of the churches out in our viewing audience, uh, people are at different levels of faith, different levels of commitment, different stages in their growth. And we as a church body and family should not spend time condemning as much as encouraging and inspiring them to move to the next level, to move to a deeper point of commitment in their faith. Now, uh, how do you feel about what's happening with hip hop today? Well, the, the good part uh, about hip hop today is that um, we're becoming more businessmen and women and we're benefiting financially, you know, becoming moguls in the industry. And that's a good thing because that was very imbalanced and it still is, but it, it's growing. But at the same time, I think we all can agree that there's a lot of negativity in the lyrics and the images of hip hop that are very damaging to our young people and to our self-esteem. And um, I just think that it's imbalanced, and I think that people are getting sick of it. I think people are starting to come together and talk about it. And an example of that, I spoke at Spelman College recently with uh, MC Light, and um, Nelly was coming to do a performance there, and this young lady, young college freshman, uh, started a protest and she didn't want him to come to the school. And the young ladies joined in and they stopped him from coming to the school because he has this song out called Tip Drill that is really degrading among a lot of other songs, degrading to women and I just thought that was awesome. And so it's encouraging to know that I'm not the only one, you know, we get together and we talk and we know that young, even young people are starting to get fed up with it. And I think as long as we stay quiet, it's just gonna get worse and worse. If you, and we're 
seconds left. If you had something that you could say to the young people in our congregation here and in our viewing audience, what would you say to them? Um, the world presents uh, success by terms of money and things. You know, the bling bling is always constantly in our young people's face. And I think that, you know, they're disillusioned. They think that once they make those millions and they make that money and they became famous or whatever, that their life is gonna be complete. I had success by the world's standards. I've been to the top of the mountain according to, you know, what success means to the world. And I was very unhappy and I was very empty and amongst the many things that you say to me that I always remember, and when I give my testimony, I always say it because it, it just struck me that there's a space in us that is reserved for God, and nothing is gonna fill that space. No boyfriend, no girlfriend, no drugs, no money. Nothing is gonna completely like Jesus Christ until you submit your life to Him.